Hey, Mr. Ben, last one we got here. I'm excited. We get to wrap this up. Absolutely, and we get to talk about subsidence and contamination. Uh, and there's only three learning targets here. Explain the cause of land um, surface subsidence. Mm -hmm. um, they get to describe how salt water can contaminate a freshwater aquifer. Mm -hmm. And last, they should be able to draw a diagram showing how pollution can move through a groundwater system. Kind of tying everything together and seeing all the properties and vocab we learned from before and some real-life application here. So they could really draw pictures in their packets of, you know, how that pollution goes in while we're kind of teaching this. Absolutely. Okay. So first topic we're talking about is subsidence. Okay. Okay. So a lot of people have issues with, like, a neighbor who's pumping too much water. Mm -hmm. Like, what could be some bad things if you were pumping too much water near my house? Well, I know when I, that farm I told you I worked on, yeah. um, people were actually mad at him because what they realized was the well that used to work, all of a sudden didn't work yeah and they blamed it on him because yeah. they said you know what you're taking water out of the well you're lowering from like in the last video the Kona depression you're lowering the water table in the area now I don't have water yeah and then they have to redrill it costs money they get mad and what ends up happening too sometimes is you can ruin a lot of the land for some other people so mm -hmm. like one example that I give especially with the subsidence is let's say you take a sponge mm -hmm. and you haven't done your dishes in a while and mm -hmm. the sponge is sitting out what happens to that sponge then it yeah, it shrinks up and it gets all shriveled and gnarly looking. Mm -hmm. You don't want to use that thing anymore. Yeah, you even try to put water back in it. It never gets up the way it used to be. Yeah. It's never a good sponge. Yeah, and the same thing actually happens with the ground. Mm -hmm. So if you pump out all that water, mm -hmm. or like dry out your sponge, right. essentially what can happen is the ground can shrink up. Like the weight of the sediment crushes those pore spaces? Yeah. Okay, the pore spaces can hold up the weight if there's water in them. Yep. But if you take the water out, the air can't hold it up and the ground kind of sinks. Yep, and sometimes, I mean, you can't really fix that. I mean, it's something where even if you try and put water in it, it's not always going to go back the same. Like, the sponge can't, won't always go back the same. Can't lift it up. That's the same one in Keem Valley where they get a lot of, grow a lot of produce and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of our, uh, a lot of our vegetables and fruits come from that area of the country. And it's kind of hot there sometimes, so they're probably drawing a lot of water out of the groundwater for irrigation. Yeah. And they actually have some serious subsidence issues. So, like, if you take a look at the, the graph here, or the chart, they've got land subsidence from 1926 to 1970. Mm -hmm. So this is, like, over a long period of time they've been pumping water. Mm -hmm. And there's some areas that are getting some serious subsidence. They say greater than 8.5 meters. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean, 8.5 meters? What's happening in the land? It's sunk, like, almost nine of these? Yeah, so the land used to be 8.5 meters up, and mm -hmm. it shrunk down. You probably wouldn't notice so much in the middle of the valley, but if you were on the edge, it might make the roads crack, like, where they're sinking in. Absolutely, yeah. And we'll actually see a really famous picture here of some of the subsidence that took place. And this is a gentleman standing near one of the agricultural fields, mm -hmm. and this is where, you know, about eight and a half meters of subsidence. So okay. they pumped out all that water, that sponge kind of shrunk up and shriveled up, mm -hmm. and it sunk, you know, all the way at the top of the flat or the telephone pole mm -hmm. was in 1925 that was the height of the ground back then and then as they pumped out the water the ground started shrinking and subsiding okay? and it got all the way down to his feet right in 1977 so it's not like the ground was up there where, where it says 1925 but the whole area including that post j dropped that far yep that's huge yeah and it's amazing. It has a really, really bad effect on the entire region. Mm -hmm. and like I said, it's got to be horrible for the roads coming in. They'd have to repair them all the time. Yeah, and if you think about it, too, you're taking a lot of that pore space that used to be filled with water, and you're condensing it and squishing it. Mm -hmm. So you're losing a lot of that pore space. Plants can't breathe as well through their roots, and you get flooding issues. It's not a really good deal. Not a good long-term thing. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, coastal wells before excessive pumping. This is kind of like in Chicago. We used to draw water out of the ground, but uh -huh. the salt that's here from a long time ago started coming up in the wells, mm -hmm. and then they had to use the water from the lake. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what ends up happening, just like we were talking about with that cone of depression, mm -hmm. uh, when you start pumping out, you end up depressing some of the water table. Okay. You get kind of the reverse effect on the bottom, where you get a cone of ascension. It's even bigger, I think. Mm -hmm. And so you start sucking up materials from deep down below, and mm -hmm. they pull it up. So if you take a look, say if you're living by a coast, so like the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico is a really big example of this. Okay. There's actually salt water underneath the fresh groundwater, mm -hmm. okay, because it's more dense, it's got salt in it, it's more dense, so it's underneath. And what ends up happening, if you pump out too much water, you actually start pulling up or ascending some of that salt water. And you actually start pumping salt water, so mm -hmm. you can't drink that. You ruin your water table. 
they probably have to worry about this like in LA and San Francisco and any of the big port cities on the west coast yeah anywhere where you're living by salt water east coast everywhere yeah. wow a lot of people live there yeah and if you start pumping too much you end up ruining your well mm -hmm. wow so this is that kind of picture of that lens of salt water that's under here. Mm -hmm. And if you pull the water up, it's going to go up to it. Yeah, pretty much. And you can see even we've got the water table that's kind mm -hmm. of following the flow of the land. Right. And then we've got this surface that's down below of this salt water just to kind of intruding or infiltrating into the soil. Mm -hmm. And if you end up pumping either too close mm -hmm. or too deep or too much pulls it up you end up pulling up that salt water and contaminating ruining your well nobody can drink out of that well anymore all right yep groundwater contamination um i've been to a few gas stations and they like have these big barriers up is that kind of like this yeah kind of um at a gas station they actually store all the gas underground okay okay now let's think of an issue with storing a bunch of gas like a flammable liquid underground what would be a problem with that well, you wouldn't want, you know, accessibility from above, and it wouldn't be good if the tank leaked because then that could flow underground, floats on top of the water. If it got into some place, um, like into a sewer system, it'd be like gas on the water. You could have explosions. Yeah, absolutely. And so this actually happens every now and then where gas stations have old gas tanks, mm -hmm. and they get rusted through through some chemical weathering. Ooh, like that picture. Yeah. And uh, what ends up happening is you get some gas leakage or seepage, and it infiltrates into the soil, can get into the groundwater, and actually pollute like your neighbor's groundwater. Mm -hmm. So you can ruin someone else's water supply just from having some leakage into the soil. It actually happened here. Did you know that, Mr. Baldwin? I did not. We used to have gas uh, <laughs> can, or gas pumps right outside that window, and <laughs> the reason why they first thought somebody was stealing gas. <laughs> What they found out was it wasn't stealing. It was actually leaking into the old pool and gathering on top of the surface there. Oh my they didn't gosh. want someone accidentally throwing a match or something in there and poof, having guidance department be you know woken up. Oh my so gosh. they had to actually put a building out there before they did the renovation, and they added hydrogen peroxide to remediate the situation. Oh, my gosh. And that mustn't have been cheap. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but it happened right here. Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. Oh. So one of the things they try and do to fix this is near a lot of gas stations, mm -hmm. they try and put an impermeable layer underneath it. Okay. So then that way, if they do have a leak, or a leak that uh, moisture, that gas isn't going to seep through. It's going to take a long time to seep through, and it might even stop it. Kind of like in a landfill. Yep. In the bottom of a landfill, too, they end up putting a big layer of clay. Mm -hmm. And that clay isn't going to allow that seepage water to get into the groundwater supply. And then where that barrier was around the the um, gas station, that must have been where they had to collect all the bad soil that was Ooh. was poisoned with the the gasoline. They had to take it out and then truck in a lot of fresh good soil. Oh my gosh! It's expensive. Oh my gosh! This is a big issue. <laughs> Ooh, it's not only um, like gasoline that's polluting. I see a cow on there. Yeah, if a cow's uh, you know doing his thing in a, in an area, you know mm -hmm. cows do what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that leaches into the ground, okay. and if you're drinking from that water, chances are you're drinking some of what the cow yeah passed Ooh. through. And then it looks like the some of the houses instead of having sewer systems, they're connected to a septic system. If those are leaking, that goes into the groundwater too. Yeah, like my parents, they have a house in Indiana, mm -hmm. and they have a septic tank, and. Like, our septic tank is on the downhill side, oh. and our water well is on the uphill side. If they got that flipped, we'd be really recycling to a point we wouldn't want to. Or if someone <laughs> put a big well on this side, the Kona Depression could draw your... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. gnarly. Not good. <laughs> yeah. So that well on the far right of the picture, all that material follows the... Um, the water table, mm -hmm. the slope of it, down to it, and then you end up having a well that can be contaminated, or it looks like they had to seal or cap that thing because it was it was it was polluted. Yeah, and I mean, you even see the city like a city could have all kinds of contaminants. Like, think about if somebody spills oil on the curb, or if there's an accident and gasoline gets out. I've heard of kids. They tell like they had their parents or somebody. They saw somebody pour oil from changing their car into the drain. You mean that could happen too? <laughs> Absolutely. That goes. Oh. To your groundwater. Man. So, a lot of basically everything that gets in the water is going towards our groundwater. It just doesn't go away, it yeah. stays with us. Yep, it's pretty gross. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now that we've grossed you out beyond belief talking about recycled cow water, um, <laughs> it's time for our quiz. All right. 
All right, so jump to your class website, take the quiz, go back to those learning targets, make sure you can uh, check off each of those learning targets, make sure you can uh, be up to date for, with that quiz.